So on average, it's about uh, seven, between seven and 15 uh, interactions with a prospect before you actually get to a point where the real discussions about sales happen, real discussions about your product or service happen. So uh, in a sales process, that could be calling, no answers. It could be you send an email, it, you get no response. It could be all of these things that it takes seven to 15 interactions or attempts to have interactions to actually get to a point where you're talking turkey or you're talking about your product or your service with a prospect. That's generally the process, seven to 15 times. Now, uh, that 15 times can be how big is the company, it can be how big is the sale, it can be how how um, how contactable is the prospect. All of those factors play into that 7 to 15 times. Now, what I see a lot of businesses doing is trying to do more of those interactions faster and more of them. So increasing the volume and increasing the ways to do the interactions with less effort. So they'll automate emails, they'll they'll automate outreach in some way, they'll they'll do all of these things to try and speed up that process but never really change the fundamentals. And I can remember years and years ago when Elon Musk was getting going and I remember this thought that Elon Musk put out there about um, how he was going to do SpaceX. Now, you may think this isn't relevant to you, but it is actually really relevant. And it's this. When he was trying to build the rocket, when he was thinking about how to do it, he went to NASA and tried to make their rocket cheaper. Then he went to the Russians because their rocket was cheaper than theirs and went, how can I make that rocket cheaper? Then he came back to the basics of science and physics and all of these things, which is the first principles of if this is what we've got to do, what's the most efficient way of doing it? So bringing that back to us, Elon Musk was trying to build a rocket and he was trying to make a NASA rocket more efficient. And there comes a point where there's only so much you can do with a model before that's the best you can get. And so uh, in sales, what we're seeing is people doing exactly that, that thing, trying to make a process that by its nature is inefficient, make it more inefficient, uh, more efficient. So you can improve a sales process and make a salesperson more efficient using the same underlying activity. But there reaches a point where you can't make it any more efficient. You can't get it for the price you want it for. You can't get the results you want uh, using the same model. So you then go to, well, what's the other model? So this is where um, we've really focused on this because what we want to do is make sales efficient. We want to make it a more efficient model. But also one of our objectives when we started Maverick was how can we make sales easier for people who are not naturally salespeople? So we began to unpick what a lot of people are doing we began to unravel it and see what we could find. So what did, what did we find? We found that underlying underlying all of the sales that we've, we've seen and witnessed and experienced um, is that people are still trying to use the same model. They understand that people aren't interested. They understand that uh, it takes time and it, they understand that the interactions have to happen. So they automate. So they they try to do other things to squeeze that model. And in effect, what most people are doing in terms of sales, a lot of it is actually the cold calling model just retranslated. So they take the fact that we dial people, we email and we ask them about things and try and sell them stuff. They take it to email. We dial people and they take it to social media. Um, it's all the same thing, just being rehashed. So here's the principles, the first principles that we laid out about how we build sales models and how we build a social selling model. So number one, the principle that we need to have, number one, is we have to make the sales process shorter. Number one. So that 7 to 15, we want it more like uh, less than 10 interactions. 
uh, but really we want more like three to seven. So shorten the sales efforts with per prospect. Number two, as we sell, we want to be building relationships because as much as you would love to say otherwise, and as much as I would love to say otherwise, a lot of the sales outcomes are determined by who talks to the person and how that person reacts with that person. So if it's if it's sparky, if it doesn't fit, that that's the problem. So we've got to make sure that the relationship is nailed. Yeah, because the relationship really matters. Number three, as we are building those relationships, as we are doing these things, we want to be seeding a bigger pipeline. So often many businesses, they run out of pipeline. Yeah, and they end up where they have a low month or a dip in the figures because they exhaust their pipeline. So we wanted an inexhaustible pipeline. So how do you create all of this and have an inexhaustible pipeline? And then the final one, how can we make it easy for anybody to do it? So there's our four principles of how we built our sales models. So literally you can train anybody to do it. You're sewing for future sales whilst building those relationships. And you're... Uh, reducing the amount of time per prospect to make a sale. These are some of the key things, the four key things. I've only mentioned three there, but the key things and the key principles that we laid down when we went, we've got to build a different model. We've got to build a different way of thinking. And from my perspective, I am not, I hate cold calling. So I will entertain any option, any model where it doesn't involve cold calling. And so that has informed how we've built something. So if you want to shorten your sales process, you have to get back to the first principles. The first principles of, you know, we've got to shorten the cycle. <laughs> we've got to build relationships. We've got to seed future pipeline. And we've got to make it easy to sell. Far too often, salespeople come into a new work working environment and they're literally copying. They do their own thing. They come in, they do their own thing, and then they learn what works in that organization. So most sales environments have learned behavior. And that learned behavior comes from the fundamental core instincts of a salesperson to, they've just got to talk to people, talk to people, talk to people, talk to people. A war of attrition, sales of attrition. Uh, but when you get back to first principles, when you start to pull it back and say, what do we want out of our sales in the way we do it? Um, then you start to go, okay, now we can build a model. And I focused on digital channels because I don't want to cold call. We can now build a model of an efficient sales process. And then the key, which I'll come to in another uh, video, is about getting your sales team engaged with it, staying engaged with it, and not reverting back to the previous way of doing things. That's it. Once you get those four principles right, you start to unpick the process then, start to build a process based on those things. You actually build a long-term sales model that will feed itself, it won't exhaust its own pipeline, and actually it becomes easier to find people to build out your team and yes, you can have um, an accountable structure with that. Yes, you can have uh, targets and numbers and all of those things. But you have to come back to the first principles and go, what are we trying to achieve here? What do we really want? Because when you get back to the basics, you find and often you discover that some of the things you've been doing, inadvertently, of course, are actually the things that's slowing down your sales exhausting your pipeline and making it harder and harder for you to sell.